Welcome back to DTW 2021, the Cube's continuous coverage of Dell Technologies World, the virtual version. My name is Dave Vellante, and for years we've been looking forward to the day that the on-premises experience was substantially similar to that offered in the public cloud. And one of the biggest gaps has been subscription-based experiences, pricing and, and simplicity and transparency with agility and scalability not buying and installing a box, but rather consuming an outcome-based service to support my IT infrastructure needs. And with me to talk about how Dell is delivering on this vision is Akanchka Marotra, Vice President Marketing for Apex at Dell Technologies. Welcome Akanchka, great to see you. Thank you, thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So we're going to dig into Apex and we know that Dell has been delivering cloud-based solutions for a long time now but it seems like there's a convergence happening in all these areas and it's generating a lot of talk in the industry. What are your customers asking you to deliver and how is Dell responding? Yeah, Dave, um, there's, a, there's a few trends that we're seeing uh, and they've been in place for a while, but um, you know, they have accelerated um, certainly over the past year. The, the first one is organizations all over the world uh, want to become more digital in order to modernize their operation and foster um, innovation on behalf of their customers. And they've been driving for years digital transformation to do so. That in and of itself isn't necessarily new, but the relative complexity um, of driving digital transformation, for example, when they're bringing on a predominantly or all of a remote uh, workforce, as well as the relative pace of change uh, for example, if they see a remarkable spike in the consumption of uh, digital content, have both accelerated over the past year. And because of that, the need for agility has gone up. The other trend that we see is that there's a clear preference uh, for a hybrid cloud approach. Uh, customers tell us that they need on-prem cloud resources to help mitigate risk. Uh, for applications that need dedicated fast performance, as well as, you know, in order to contain costs. But then they also tell us that public cloud is here to stay for the increased agility that it provides the simplified operations, as well as the faster access to innovation. And so what's really clear is that, you know, both private cloud and public cloud have their strengths and picking one, you're, you're in, 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 you know, inevitably trading off the benefits of the other. And so an organization want the flexibility to be able to choose the right path to best meet their business objectives. And IT as a service delivered at the location of your choice is one way to do that. Um, as you know, we talk a lot to analysts like yourself and, and they tend to agree with us. Um, IDC predicts that by 2024, over half of the data center infrastructure is going to be consumed as a service. At Dell Technologies, we're beginning to see this shift happen already. Um, as you said, we've been providing flexible consumption and as a service solutions for well over a decade. Um, however, what's different now is that we're radically simplifying that entire technology experience to deliver this at scale to our entire install base. And that's what ABEX is all about. Great, thank you. So I know Dell is very proud of its high, I think I got this ratio right, high do to say ratio, right? Numerator is bigger than the denominator. Um, yes. and, and you got a good track record in, in this regard. You can, uh, you can announce Project Apex in October and you've provided a preview of what was coming then and, and today you're fully unveiling Apex, no more project, just Apex. Yeah. What's Apex all about and, and what customer benefits specifically does Apex deliver? Yeah, yeah, so you're right. We, we announced this as a vision back in October and, and now we're kind of taking away the project and it's generally available. So you can kind of refer to it as Apex going forward. Apex represents our portfolio of as a service offerings. Um, these help simplify digital transformation for our customers by increasing their IT's agility and their control. We believe it's a solution that helps bridge this divide between public um, and private cloud by delivering as a service wherever it's needed to help organizations meet the needs of their digital transformation agenda. Um, talking to our customers in terms of uh, customer benefits, we've centered around um, three areas uh, and they are uh, simplicity, agility, and control as the key benefits that Apex is going to provide to our customers. So let me, let me unpack these uh, one by one and kind of demonstrate how Great. we're going to deliver um, on these promises. Um, let's start with simplicity. Um, Apex represents a fundamental shift in the way that we deliver our technology portfolio. And obviously we do this to simplify you know, IT for our customers. 
our goal is to remove complexity from every stage of the customer journey. So for example, Apex with Apex and Apex uh, offers that I'll just get into in, um, in a bit, um, we take away the complexity, the pain, and, and frankly, the undifferentiated work of managing infrastructure so that organizations can focus on what they do best, right? Um, adding value to their organizations. Another way in which we uh, simplify is streamline the procurement uh, process. So we allow customers to just simplify a simple set of outcomes that they're looking for and subscribe to a service uh, using an easy web-based console. And then we'll take it from there. We will pick the technology and the services that best uh, meets the need, uh, you know, best delivers on those set of outcomes and then we'll deliver it for them. So as a result, organizations can kind of take advantage of the technology that best meets their needs, but without all the complexity of life cycle management, whether it's at the beginning or at the end, um, you know, the, the decommissioning part of the life cycle. Uh, next, let's talk about agility. Um, this is an area that's been top of mind for customers, as I said, certainly over the past year. Um, and frankly, it's been one of the main driving factors over the ad service um, revolution. Um, again, with Apex, we aim to deliver agility at every stage of the customer journey. So, for example, with Apex, we our goal is to get customers started on projects faster than they ever have before within their data center. We target a 14 day time to value from order to activation or from subscription to activation, you know, within the location of their choice. Another driver for agility is having access to technology when you need it without, you know, costly over provisioning. So with Apex, you can dynamically scale your resources up and down based on changing business requirements. And then a third barrier of agility, and this is a, you know, a serious one, is just forecasting costs and containing them. Um, and with Apex, um, you know, our, our promise is that you're paying for technology only as it's used, using a clear, consistent, and a transparent rate. Uh, so you're never guessing what you're going to pay. There's no overage charges, and you're not, you know, paying to access your own data. And then finally, um, from a uh, control standpoint, often business and IT leaders are forced to make you know, difficult trade-offs uh, between the simplicity and the flexibility they want and the control, the performance, and the data locality that perhaps they need. Apex will help bridge this uh, divide. And so we're not going to make them make this kind of false trade-off between them. Um, it'll enable organizations to take control of their operations from where resources are located to how they are run to who can access them. So, for example, by dictating where they want to run their resources in a colo or at the edge or within their data center, um, you know, IT teams can take charge of their compliance obligations and simplify them. Uh, by using role-based permissions they, uh, to limit access, IT organizations can choose who can access certain functionality for these, uh, for uh, you know, configuring Apex services and thereby kind of reduce risk and simplify those uh, security obligations. So, those are some examples of um, you know how we deliver um, uh, simplicity, agility, and control to our customers with Apex. You know, I'll give you a little aside here, if if I may. You know, you said the trade-offs and I've been working on this scenario of you know how we're going to come back from the pandemic and you, you're seeing this hybrid approach where we're organizations are having to fund their digital transformation they're having to support a hybrid workforce and their headquarters investments their traditional data center investments have been neglected and and the other thing is there's very clearly a skills gap a shortage of talent so to the extent that you have something like, like Apex that where I don't have to be provisioning lawns and spending all this time both waiting and provisioning and tuning, that allows me to free up talent and really you know, deliver on some of those, those, those problematic areas that are forcing me today to do a trade-off. So I think exactly. that really resonates with, with me, Akashka. Yeah. So. You're, you're exactly right. No more kind of refactoring applications, learning new skill set, hiring new people. You can, if, if the, the part that resonates with you is that you know, agility and simplicity, you know, why not have it uh, where it makes sense? Yeah. Um, you know? So, so Apex is a new way of thinking. I mean, certainly for Dell and, and, and in terms of how you deliver for a way customers consume. Um, can you be specific on some of the offerings that we can expect uh, from DTW this year? Yes, we've got a variety of announcements. Let me, let me talk about those. Let's start with the Apex console. Um, this is a unified experience for the entire Apex journey. Um, it provides self-service access to our catalog of Apex services. 
Um, as I mentioned, customers simply select the outcomes that they're looking for. They need to subscribe to the technology service that best meets their needs, and then we'll take it from there. Um, from a day two operation standpoint, the console will also give customers insight and oversight into other aspects um, of the Apex experience. For example, they can limit access to the functionality by role. Uh, they can modify, view their subscriptions, and then modify it. They can engage in kind of provisioning um, type tasks. They can see cost transparently, view billing and payment information each month, and use it for things like showback or chargeback to you know, various business units um, you know, within uh, within their organization. Over time, we will also be integrating um, the console with common procurement uh, and provisioning systems so that they can further streamline approval workflows, as well as publish APIs for further integration from developers at the customer site. Um, so, you know, NetNet console will be the single place for us to procure, operate, and monitor Apex services, and we think it's going to become an important way for us to interact with our customers, as well as our partners to interact with Dell Technologies going forward. Yes. Uh, the next, please. Sorry. No, carry on, please. Uh, the next announcement is Apex Data Storage Services. Um, this one is a first in a series of outcome-based turnkey services in the Apex portfolio. Um, uh, you know, at the end, this, this essentially delivers um, storage resources at the customers, um, you know, at the location that they would uh, they would prefer. When subscribing to this, there's just four parameters that the customers need to think about: what type of data services they're looking for, file, block, and soon it'll be object. Uh, what performance tier the application um, that the customer is going to run on these resources needs. They can pick between three levels, what base capacity they want, where they can start at 50 terabytes, and then the term length that they're looking for, subscription length. Um, we also announced a partnership with Equinix. So if a customer wants, they can deploy these resources at Equinix's um, data centers all around the world and still get a unified bill from us. And then, and that's it. You know, from the, once they make those four selections, they subscribe to the service. We take it from there. There's no selecting what product do you want, what configuration of that product, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know, we take care of all of that, include the right services, and then kind of deliver it to them. To them. So it's really an outcome-based way of procuring technology as easily as you would uh, provision resources in a public cloud. Awesome. So get okay. console, data storage, cloud services, which which uh, are key. Now let's talk about cloud services. Yeah, and um, and then the partner piece with Equinix for for latency and proximity, uh, yep. speed of light stuff type stuff. Okay, cool. So exactly, cloud services very quickly are integrated solutions to help simplify that adoption, um, and they support both cloud um, uh, cloud native as well as traditional workloads. Customers can subscribe either to a private cloud offer or a hybrid cloud offer, depending on the level of control that they're looking for um, and the operational consistency that they need. And again, uh, similar to storage services, they pick from kind of four simple steps and uh, we'll deliver it to them within 14 days. And then finally, we've got something called custom solutions. Um, these are for customers who are looking for a more flexible as a service environment. They're available right now in over 30 countries, also available to our partner um, network. Uh, comes in two flavors, Apex Flex On Demand, which um, takes anything within our broad infrastructure portfolio, server storage, data protection, you name it, um, and uh, can turn we can turn that into a pay-per-use um, environment. Um, you can also select what services you'd like to um, include. So if a customer wants it managed, we can manage it for them. If they don't want it managed, they can you know, um, include it without um, those services. And, and essentially they can configure their own as a service experience and then data center utility takes it to the next um, level and offers even more customization in terms of custom telemetry options, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's, that's kind of a, a quick summary of the announcements uh, in the Apex portfolio. Okay, okay, I think I got it. This was I, 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 five buckets, the console, which gives you that full life cycle, that self-service, the storage piece, the cloud services, the, the Equinix partnership and the partners. That's a whole another conversation. And then the custom piece, if you really want to customize it for your- And store services, business. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, good, okay, you guys have been busy. Um, so you announced Project Apex uh, last fall. And so I presume you've been out talking to customers about this, prototyping it, testing it out. Maybe you could share some examples of customers who've tried it out and what the feedback has been and the, the use cases. Yeah. Let me, let me give you a couple of examples. Um, we'll start with Apex Data Storage Services. Um, as I said, this one's going generally available now. 
Um, at Dell, we believe in drinking our own champagne. So our own IT team has been uh, engaged in a private data um, of this service for the past several months and their feedback has helped shape the offer. Um, the feedback that they've given us is that they really like that li like simple life cycle management. Um, you know, they tell us that it frees up their, their folks to do a lot of other things and, you know, uh, that are kind of higher level order tasks, if you will, versus managing the infrastructure. Uh, they're seeing greater efficiencies in capacity and performance management. Uh, they like not having to worry about building a capacity pipeline. Uh, and they like being um, able to kind of build on a, a chargeback process that will allow them to build internal views based on what's being used. And so they think it's going to be a game changer for them. Um, and, you know, that's the feedback that they, and of course, they've given us lots of feedback that we've also, uh, uh, you know, uh, put into building the product itself. But they, in, in short, they really like the flexibility of it. Um, let me give you a, uh, maybe a customer example and then a partner example as well. Um, Apex Cloud Services. Um, this is one where uh, more and more customers are realizing that for compliance, regulatory or performance reasons, maybe public cloud doesn't really work for them. It, um, and so they've been looking for ways to get that experience within their data center. Apex Hybrid Cloud enables this. Using this as a foundation, customers are quickly able to extend workloads like BDI into these different environments. Um, a global technology consulting firm wanted to focus on uh, their business of, of providing consulting service versus, you know, managing our infrastructure. And so what they also really uh, liked was the paper use model and the ability to scale up without having to engage in kind of renegotiating terms. Um, they also uh, appreciated and like the cost transparency that we provided and, and their feedback to us that it was sort of unmatched. Uh, with other solutions that they've seen and, and, and they like the sort of cost containment benefits uh, because they give them much more control over their um, budget. And then um, from a partner standpoint, um, Apex Custom Solutions, as I said, is available in over 30 countries today. It's available through our VAS partner network. We've got a you know series of lucrative partner options for them. A recent win that we saw in this space was with a healthcare provider. Um, this particular healthcare provider was constantly challenging their IT team to improve service delivery. They wanted to onboard customers faster, drive services uh, deployment while ensuring the compliance of their healthcare data. As you, as you I'm sure know, there you know some strict requirements in this space. Um, with Flex on Demand, they were able to dramatically cut that onboarding time from months to days. Uh, they were able to be just as agile uh, while simplifying their compliance with industry regulations for data privacy and sovereignty. Sovereignty, um, and 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 so their feedback with us is they were able to be just as agile and just as cost effective as a cloud solution, but without the concerns over data residency. So, those are a few use cases, and then real customer examples of um, customers that have tried out these services. Awesome, thanks for that. I mean, real tr transformation for the partners as well. I think actually, if partners lean in, they can make a lot of money doing this. I know Absolutely. it's it's, yes, it's yeah, it yeah it's yes. different. Profitability. Yeah, well, that's what the hey, that's what the channel cares about, right? I mean, it's different from the the past of selling boxes. That was sort of okay. I know, you got my margin there, but this I think actually had huge opportunities to get deeper into the customer, add value in so many other different ways. The channel is undergoing tremendous transformation. Um, I have to ask you. So I think the first time I saw, so you have flexible consumption. You've had that for a number of years. I think the first time I saw it was like late '90s or, or early 2000s when I saw these types of models emerge. So can you explain how Apex differs from your past as a service offerings? And I got another sort of second part of the question uh, after that. Yeah, um, you're right. We, we, we've offered these solutions for a while um, and very successfully. So I, I, you know, I should add, right? Certainly over the past year, our business has seen tremendous momentum. And if you listen to our earnings, you probably heard that. Yep. What's different here is that we're taking, think of this as Apex as a 2.0 of that. So we've been doing that. We're going to continue doing that. But you know, what, you, what I talked about in Apex Custom Solutions is what we've been delivering for a while. And of course, we continue to improve it as we get um, customer feedback on it. 
what we're doing here on the on the turnkey side is that we're taking not a product based, not a service based, but really an outcome based approach. And what's different there, and what I mean by that is we're we're truly looking to bypass complexity throughout the entire technology life cycle. We're truly kind of looking to uh, figure out where can we remove a significant amount of time and effort from IT teams by delivering them um, an offer that's simple from the get go. Each of these offers have been designed from the ground up to provide not just the innovative technology that our customers have known us forever, but, but to do so with greater simplicity to deliver greater agility uh, while still retaining the control that we know our customers want. That is what is different. And by doing that, by making this consistently available in a very kind of simple way, we believe we can scale that experience. That along with, you know, backed up with our services, our scale, our supply chain leadership that we've had for a while, built on our um, industry leading portfolio, um, the broadest in the industry, and then delivering that with unmatched time to value at you know, whatever location the customer is looking for, by doing these three things, we believe we're, we're uh, combining not just the agility that our customers want and the, as well as the, you know, control that they need and putting it all together in the simplest way possible and delivering it with our partners. So I, I think that's what's different um, with what we're doing now. And, and frankly, that, that's also our commitment going forward. So you can imagine today I talked to you about our our cloud solutions, our infrastructure solutions, but you know, imagine going forward, all of our solutions, server, storage, data protection, workload, end user devices, telecom solutions, edge solutions, gaming devices, all of them kind of delivered in this way. Um, and uh, you know, uh, only the way that Dell Technologies and our partner community can. When I hear you say outcome-based, a lot of people may think, well, what's that? I'll tell you what I think it is. If I'm, if I, the outcome I want is I want, to, I want my, my IT to be fast, I, I, I want it to be reliable. I want it to be at a fair price. I don't want to run out of storage, for example. And if I need more, I want it fast. Um, yeah. And I want it simple. I mean, that's yeah. that's the outcome that I want. Is that what you mean by outcome-based? Absolutely. Those are exactly the types of, you know, it's a combination, like you said, of business as well as you know, technology outcomes that mm -hmm. we're targeting, right? Uh, but those are exactly it. Availability, uptime, performance, um, uh, you know, uh, time to value. Those are exactly the types of um, outcomes that we're targeting with these offers. And, and that's what our services are designed, um, you know, from the ground up to do. Okay, last question. Second part of my other question is, is I mean, essentially you've got the cloud model, you bring in that to uh, on-prem, you've got other on-prem competitors. What, what's different uh, with Dell from the competition? Yeah, so I, I would say uh, from a competitive standpoint, as you said, you know, we, we, we certainly have a, a series of competitors in the on-prem space, and then we've got another set of competitors in the cloud space. And what we are truly trying to do is, you know, bring, bring the best of that experience to wherever our customers want to, um, you know, deploy these resources. From an on-prem standpoint, I, I think our differentiation always has and will continue to be the the breadth of our portfolio, um, you know, the uh, the technology that we provide, and bringing this Apex experience in a very, um, you know, simple and consistent way across that entire, uh, you know, breadth of products. The other differentiation that that I I believe we have um, is is frankly our pricing model, right? You you mentioned it a few times. I talked a little bit about it earlier as well. Um, with um, if I use storage as an example, we are not going to have um, you know we're not going to charge you a penalty if you need to scale up and down. We understand and realize that businesses. Uh, you know, need to uh, have that flexibility um, to be able to go up and down and having a simple, clear, consistent rate uh, that they understand very clearly up front that they have visibility to um, that, you know, charges them in kind of a fair way is another kind of point of differentiation. So not having that kind of, you know, surge pricing, if you will. Um, and then finally, the third difference is our, our services, our scale, our supply chain leadership, and then just, you know, say do ratio, right? When we say something, we're going to do it and we're going to deliver it. Um, from, a, from a cloud player standpoint, it's really interesting. You know, I talked about this, this trade-off that um, our customers often have to make. You have to give up control to get this uh, simplicity and agility, and we're not going to make you do that, right? As a as an ITDN, you manage, um, you know, you've got full control of that infrastructure while still getting the benefits of the agility and the simplicity that today you often have to go to public cloud for. 
Um, again, from a pricing standpoint, um, you know, the, the, the other differentiation that we have is you're not going to be paying to access your own data, right? You, you pay a clear rate um, um, and it stays consistent, but you're not accessed. There's no egress, ingress charges. There's no retraining of your sales force. There's no refactoring of the application um, to move it there. There's all these kind of unspoken um, costs that go into moving an application into public cloud that you're not going to see uh, with us. And then finally, from a performance standpoint, we do believe that the performance that we that we um, have with uh, Apex Solution is significantly better. Um, you know, just the fact that you've got dedicated infrastructure, uh, you're not running into issues with noisy neighbors, for example, um, as well as just the underlying quality of the technology that we deliver. I mean, the experience that we've had um, and not just in the space, but then delivering it to, you know, hundreds and thousands of customers at hundreds and thousands of locations. Cloudflare is a very good at optimizing for, uh, for a few locations for, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers. But we've been for years delivering this experience, um, you know, across the world, across hundreds and thousands of data centers and the expertise that our services, uh, our supply chain and, in fact, their product teams have built up, um, I think will serve as well. Great, a lot of depth there, Akanchka. Thanks so much, um, and congratulations for giving birth to, formally to, to <laughs> Apex, and, and best of luck. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE and sharing. Thanks, Dave, thank you for having me. It was really our pleasure, and thank you for watching everybody. This is theCUBE's coverage, ongoing coverage of Dell Tech World 2021. We'll be right back.